It was um, Water Week last week in uh, Canada. Did you know? I'm, I'm a big fan of water, which is everywhere threatened. So this poem is called, The Earth is Already Damned. Oh, why are the salmon runs ruined and the mighty deltas parched and dry? Because the earth is already damned. Why is the Amudaria withered and the wetlands shrunk to sterile salt flats? Because this earth is constantly damned. Why do the sandhill cranes tremble on their long legs, landing nowhere after nowhere in diminishing migrations? Why do those liquid slaves, the rivers, stand still in their chains, stripped of their old ways, never to spill free again upon the land? Because the whole earth is repeatedly damned, damned for power, damned just to make work. Every river across the globe, locked, blocked, toxic. It is time to stop the constant damming of the earth. Free the great currents. Unleash the torrents of the Nile on a thousand miles of thirst. Let the whirling eddies of the held back plat revivify the wetlands. Recirculate the stacked sediments. Bring back the hatcheries, the green thatch of cottonwood upon arid banks. I want to hear the rush and hush of free green water restored to ancient circuits. I want to see the earth decursed, its rivers re resurrected, the damages reversed. I want a free flowing, re blessed world. I want people to stop damning this planet. This is um, a poem from my, my book called Blue Pyramids. Um, but I feel this way again. It's sort of about incarnation, coming down into your body, which I'm sort of about down to here now. I've got a way to go. Incarnation. Have a place for me, a perfect fit. Make me one with my need. Pour the warm light liquid all down my naked body. I have a genetic expectation, a feeling for arrival. I'm coming down like a thousand birds onto the black branch. I'm coming down, a zeppelin, a bag of blue air into the tree-shaped brains, into the dendrite forest, into the longing cell. I have toes for my toes and nose for my nose. I'm coming down into my liver, descending into my lungs. I am diving down into the cold black waters of the belly, a million miles into my stomach, and I still have not rung the bottom's deep bell tone. I am drifting down in mines, vines, into clear blue bones, into the orange skull, the blind gristle in pulses of pure black soul, through a long rubber tube, through a bronze body, on a reel, on an anchor long since sunk, in the never-to-be-shaken bottom of me, to the blackened tree, mine cross, joining place, to the socket in the riverbed, the pierced Cartesian crossroad, with a stitch of uncuttable time, I am coming down like the entire air force onto the black ship. I am coming down like the monarchs on Mexico. The body is a vast tropic, unreachable by foot. I am lost between volcanoes. There are a thousand miles of air above my head. In a moment more, a second more, my feet will touch the ground, and my feet are the ground. My eyes are the light. The air breathes me in and exhales me in a long fluttering flow. I am down in my body like the liquid rains, like the finely fallen peak, the obese suspended Buddhas, the plutonium Christs with their tears of heavy water. I am down with my jade grown bones, my spirit legs bicycling. And the earth touches me like a forever denied son, like an exile returned illegally. The earth touches me like a long lost mother, and her name is Terra, terror. Her name is life. Wow. 
Um, I also write poems for children, and um, I've been working for some years on this book of tributes to people who've inspired me. I, I think the last time I was here I read the Rosa Parks poem. They take a long time to write, and uh, um, I have one for Elijah Harper and Muhammad Ali, and, well, I won't take up my 20 minutes telling you what the other poems are. This is my most recent. Um, and it's for the man who stopped tanks, the guy in China, you know who I mean. So this is for kids, for you. The tanks were rolling fast to Tiananmen Square, heading for the protesters to get them out of there. Along came a man, two shopping bags in hand. He turned to face a tank, and there he took a stand. The tank kept rolling as though it might kill. He stood there steady. He stood so still. He was not a soldier, no weapon in his fist. He risked his very life standing there like this. The tank rolled closer. It wouldn't be blocked. But two feet away, it suddenly stopped. First one tank, then the tank behind. Two, three, four tanks all stopped in a line. They all stood still while the tension grew. They turned to go around him, but he stood there too. He looked so ordinary, so young and so thin. The tanks stood still. What thrall were they in? They were under orders. What force held them there two blocks away from Tiananmen Square? The man was dragged away by two people in the end, but were they the police or were they his friends? What was his name? Nobody knows. What happened to him? Where did he go? The man who stopped tanks, is he here or there? You no longer see him in Tiananmen Square. You no longer see him anywhere. It's like he has vanished into thin air. Some say he's jailed. Others say dead. He might be in Taiwan or hiding in Tibet. But the tanks stood still. The world watched in wonder. What was his superpower? What spell were they under? I try not to repeat any poems I did last time, you know. I, I consider them durable for multi-readings, but you know. Um, but this is the, I do want to read this because uh, I've got books to sell. Uh, this is the title piece from Reading the Bible Backwards, um, which, um, as you might gather from the title, is I'm kind of playing around with uh, reverse narrativity. So this is um, the New Testament one. Reading the Bible backwards, Christ Jesus pops his nails and comes down to give the karma back to the people. Bearing the cross downhill, he shrugs off the scourging of his torturers. He escapes unscathed from his backwards trial, returned by Rome to the Judas kiss. Reading the Bible backwards, Christ Jesus says, Cursed are the meek, for the rich shall inherit the earth. He says, he says turn the other cheek or I'll turn it for you. The money changers throw backwards Jesus out of the temple and he wanders around giving people leprosy and causing blindness. <laughs> Reading the Bible backwards, Christ Jesus turns the adulteress over to her judges. He puts the resurrected back to death, but they rise again like bread. After that, he leaves the living living and the dying dying. He moonwalks rapidly out of history Back to Mary's arms in reverse birth, he shrinks through her womb, rewound to the infertile egg, and beyond. For a while, there is a star that hovers, then that too is gone. This is um, a new poem, and I'm I'm working on it still. It'll probably uh, be revised a bit from where you hear it, but uh, I want to try it out again. It's, um, it's not in that book, this, and I've sort of done with backwardsness, but this, this one just kind of came at me. This is a true, uh, and I love John Lennon, this is a true history of John Lennon backwards in beds. 
Lenin curls like a newborn, naked, round Yoko, fully clothed, detached, her arms flung back flat on the mattress. He kisses her left cheek desperately, click. It's a rolling stone cover. It's his last morning on earth. The bed in bed. Journalists lie down with them for interviews. Their combination anti-war protest slash honeymoon. The bed in which he sings give peace a chance in a great raw holler and it's a worldwide hit. John Lennon rolls a hospital bed into Abbey Road studio, Yoko in it, injured. We can't bear to be apart, he tells the other Beatles. They're annoyed, but go ahead, their final album recorded in the presence of this bed. Two motherless men enter a hotel. On the ends of twin beds, face to face, John and Paul sit, writing their first American number one, She Loves You. To synchronize the harmonies, they lean in close and watch each other's lips. The motto of the school the schoolboy hates is, out of this rock. He'd rather lie in bed all day and dream. Aunt Mimi calls him lazy, an underachiever, but he is sure he's a great soul, though he's never yet even heard of rock and roll. Age three. His mother lets him sleep with her in the same bed as her lover. Aunt Mimi reports them. Aunt Mimi steals him from that bed to which there is never any way back. 1942. Incendiaries fall on Liverpool all night long. The worst raid of the war and newborn John, for safety's sake, is placed beneath the bed. Beneath the bed, his first night on earth, Lennon screams that great raw holler in fine form as the bombs roar. Um, this is a poem that I hope does not embarrass the young lady it's about. Um, this is someone I met a few years ago um, and she was headed for a, a tour um, going to the west and, and there's a lot of stars there and I saw their eyes following her and so I've changed her name to protect the um, guilty. Um, this is, <clears throat> so it's, it's called For Odysseus Magpie. Uh, it's called The Problem with a Glittering Heart. The problem with a glittering heart is that the magpie takes it with her into the west. You think that is a V of geese overhead? No, one magpie and two long lines of glittering hearts trying to keep up. This, they say, is the origin of the stars. Ah, it's the sound of no one blushing, good. Um, my, my piece in, 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 in the, the, the workbook um, is about writing micro poems. So I've got some micro poems and then a song, and I, I, I don't have a watch. So I'm trying not to, uh, I'm trying not to go over 20 minutes because I don't want to fuck up the guy after me. Okay, some, some micro poems. Brevity forever. Hey. You're eating up my time here, stop laughing. I can count the universe on one finger. It is better to have loved and loved and loved. The sun is a thought too bright to look at. The sky is completely unedited. You've got a star on your stick and a breakaway on an empty sky. For sale, previously feared darkness, Homophobia is a choice. There's no blasphemy like religion itself. <laughs> Backwards Christian soldiers. Vaginal birth, not virginal birth. Safe sex, not faith sex. 
There is no trampoline like the bottom of the soul. A soul? Asshole. <laughs> In my country, we don't have free speech, but the speech we do have is really, really cheap. <laughs> Whispering is not just a right, it's a duty. Maybe you should start listening to your outer child. <laughs> the only true poetry is the longing for poetry. It is the curse of the capable not to be called upon. It's easier to crush hope than to have it. When people tell you you are gullible, do you always believe them? <laughs> the elephant in the room is the monkey on my back. Look big and carry a little taser. Enter taserment. New clear power. Safety fifth. Oil is the opiate of the masses. Every herd has its cliff. I hear the howling of the ghost terrain. What doesn't kill me just delays the inevitable. Wickedness loves stupidity. What part of no did you mean? <laughs> Spaceships are the new steeples. My job has been declared abundant. The body and the brain are mutual maps and there is no territory. You have such beautiful breaths. <laughs> You're so bright, people see by you. You are part lantern. One hand illuminates another. One lamp reveals the next. The stars have stars of their own. Einstein liked traveling light. Is there an Olympics for the lifting of hearts? If humankind were kind, I can see into the present. I choose free will. I believe in life before death. I believe in the resurrection of the soil. May the forest be with you. If the well is well, the people are well as well. Take back the future. Give it while you can. I am so deeply in life with you. Never in human history have so many people been so in life with one another. Stop global warring. Our secret power is our compassion. One wind moves many flags. It takes the whole world to make one peace. <laughs> this just never happens to me. Let's see here. I have to sit down because I have a rotator cuff injury, okay? Some people hassle you if you sit down when you play the guitar. No, they don't. That's right, sir. He doesn't say a lot, but it's usually witty, right? Oh, right, this bit. Okay, do not alienate the audience. So I'll end up with this. This is, um, how am I doing for time, Sherry D? Excellent. <laughs> oh, 
am I still in tune? So um, this is uh, another backwards thing. This is um, also after the book, but it's... Um, okay, this is called The Bomb in Reverse. The bomb in reverse, it implodes the pyre It sears on the roof, it sucks out the fire It snuffs the inferno and gives back the lies They unscream their screams and the people arise They unsay their prayers Verse before verse is the backwards resurrection miracle bomb in reverse. Little ones unburn in the shrinking flame. Young Ali has arms, he's no longer maimed. He returns to mother, runs backwards to play. Back to when he knew he'd live forever yesterday. He unlearns his numbers, last before verse. It's the Blackwoods resurrection miracle bomb in reverse. The bomb in reverse rises to the jet, sucking in its calm trail over minarets. And stern first to the tarmac. The pilot unsigns the form He unlives his life back to that bright September morn He sees people falling up to towers rise from earth It's the backwards resurrection miracle bomb in reverse The bomb in reverse, it restores the tower it sears on the walls, it sucks out the fire Melts flesh back together and gives back the lives They unscream their screams and the people arise They unsay their prayers, birth before birth Is a backwards resurrection miracle bomb in Little ones unburn in the shrinking flame Young Ali has arms, he's no longer maimed He returns to mother, runs backwards to play Back to when he knew he'd live forever yesterday Thank you very much, Calgary, and thank you, Sherry D, and all the volunteers and the taxpayers of Canada and Ontario, and uh, my fellow artists. A great honor to be with you, and uh, cheers.